is episode 16. This is episode 16. And Here we'd we like are. to welcome everybody once again. Good afternoon, YouTube. And Good morning. Good evening. Depending on where you're at in the country. Like we world. always do. Like we always do. You can reach me at the Real Heim One on Instagram. And if you feel like it, you can reach me on Instagram at One Take Will. That's right, man. That's right. Yeah. And we're back. We're back. We're back again. And uh, are you going to say the title of this episode? Well, yes. This title is called Way Back When. Way Back When. We're going to touch on some things that uh, reached our childhood, like in the 90s and some of the part of the 80s and stuff like that. And uh, some of the cool nostalgia, toys, whatever, things we did, all that kind of stuff. We're going to take a walk down memory lane to some of the childhood television shows and maybe um, things we played with. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. But yeah. Like you said, man, first we want to touch on a couple things that are happening in this current situation. So let's just get this one out of the way right off the bat. Uh, the whole situation where, you know, I thought it was going to be bad enough with us, this lockdown and this whole uh, invisible enemy situation. And now it seems like the United States is going to burn down worse than Australia did in the beginning of the year. Yeah, it's like a whole new, another media takeover. Holy crap. I don't There's think a lot it's... More, uh... With a lot more substance in, involved. It's gonna. It's pretty insane. You know, us being uh, from where we're at, we uh, we're, we're waiting for it to get started here in the Detroit metropolitan area. We're gonna see what happens here. So, but, as you all know, you know, a police officer. That situation with a police officer and the individual who lost his life. Yeah. With uh, you know, the brutality inc incident. But um, you know, uh, we just hope everybody out there. You know, we do hope you. You know, make, you you got to take your stand and you know do what you got to do. Believe what you believe in. Absolutely. But also, I hope you guys are all going to be safe out there. You know, take a stand because it's not right what happened. You know, him and I are in both agreement. It, what what the situation that took place not at all right. This 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 police officer should definitely be prosecuted and and do some time for this because that's way out of line what he did. But at the same time, be mindful of your fellow citizens when you're out there protesting this grievous, you know, um, thing that happened. You know, people out there got businesses, people out there trying to survive. Don't just be indiscriminately destroying property for no apparent reason. And, you know, for some of these people that this looks like this is something new to you seen in the news, this isn't something new. Now it's just being filmed. That's true. This isn't like something that just started happening. This has been going on for a long time. Oh, absolutely. This is, yeah, this is just being on camera now. That You know, this is another thing that the television news has grabbed a hold of because, you know, they're slowly dying. And you this know has this. Been a, this has been something that, that the African-American people have been going through and a lot of minorities for a long time. And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like... Uh, and the Latino community. Yeah, that's why I mean the minority group, you know. <clears throat> the, but, you know, it just hits hard. It hits hard and, you know, sometimes you, you know, um, you knock down a door a couple times, they don't want to listen. You knock a little louder, they don't want to listen. Then it gets to the point where you're going to actually try to take the door down. You're going to take the door off the hinges because we're going to go in the door. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty ridiculous. But, I, you know, like I said, I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Everybody, you know, needs to be, you know, I thought justice was supposed to be blind. OK, I thought everybody was equally criminal or non-criminal in the eyes of the law. It didn't matter. It's not supposed to matter where you come from, who you are, what you look like. If you've done something wrong, you get treated accordingly. And there are rules for how we treat people. Yeah. That's, so. Uh... Yeah, I wish it was equal, but it ain't. But I think that's all we're going to touch on on that because uh, I want to jump to something that I'm... Before we do... Oh, okay. If anybody out there, you know, some of you looters got some extra TVs for sale for a low price, you know, hit me up. Oh, computer equipment, televisions, microphones. Any discount kind of electronics. Yeah. Hit we're... me up at the real high one. And at one take will because uh, <laughs> we'll definitely help you uh, move those products on a five-finger discount. Boost the economy. That's right. Got to got to do that. <laughs> got to yabba dabba do that. And in case any of you are wondering, that was a joke. Yes, it was. Just in case those of you are wondering, we're just trying to lay the mood a little. Bit. SpaceX and Dragon, is it Dragon? The launch, the space launch. Yeah, I Tesla's the man, dude. He's like the man, dude, right now. Dude, this He's like is the Michael Jordan of like science right now. Listen, this is a historic event. This is the first time in history that two men will be launched into space 
via commercial industry, not of a government industry. This is great. This is historic. I am super excited. Not only that, it's been about I think eleven years since we even launched off our own country. We've yeah, been we've been launched. Else, we've know. been launching out of Russia. We've been getting to the ISS, the International Space Station. For those of you who don't know those acronyms, uh, we've been launching out of Russia. And, uh, yeah, this will be the first time in, since 2011. You know what excites me? Um, what's really cool about this, when I was younger and all these space things would happen, every, yeah. time, every time a space mission would happen, sure, um, it would, like, uh, it would like uh, be the culmination of a new form of technology that comes out. Like something, some new innovation happens every time something like this happens. So I'm really excited because, like, you know, we got, like, the iPhones one time, and then we got, like, these other, like, technologies taking these crazy bounds. And what is this next, like, oh, you see, next uh, big innovation going to be that's you what know, say, you when think, they come back from space? You think there's going to be a big, like, like a quantum leap, if you will, in technology from this sort of event happening? I don't know. I just, like, just from, like, my own ch childhood, you know, growing up through things, it seemed like every time they did a big mission like this, um, things change. Like, you got a new type of innovation of some sort, whether it was energy source or energy development, you know, pollution cleaner. Well, I don't know what it was, but, right. you know, Tang <laughs> and all that kind of shit. I think it's, this is like, what makes this really cool, you know, before uh, growing up, I had the shuttle launches and you had the shuttle launches. We never got to see an Apollo launch. We're not that old, unfortunately, because I'd have loved to have seen Damn one it. of the Yeah! I would have loved to be there for that son of a bitch. Back in 1971. That's what I'm talking about. But it would have been beautiful to see an Apollo launch, but we got to see the shuttle launches, and you and I both got to see two of them, uh, you know, unfortunately get destroyed during a, a yeah, one yeah. during a takeoff and one during a reentry. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, this doesn't happen, you know. But this is, you know, these are the things that happen with this type of um, what is it? Uh, these these pioneers, you know, these adventurers, they're going out doing these things. You know, there's always tra tragedy that could befall them. But yeah, I they're think, like um, they're like path makers too, you know. Yeah, like trailblazers are what they that's, call them. Yes, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. But I think like I'm looking at the technology, you know. You think about the parts involved with the shuttle. There was what five parts. You had the two side boosters and the tank and the shuttle. Now you just got the two parts and the damn rocket that launches them into space comes back on its own and yeah, lands. It comes back. That's cool. You there's no going into the ocean with a helicopter to retrieve the parts. This thing flies back home. That's cool. No more, like, floating space junk. No, it's totally awesome. I really dig it, and I'm excited for today's launch. Uh, I was bummed I'm so out. I'm so amped up. I, I, I hope it happens today. The weather looks great. Yeah. I've been watching it like a freaking, like, I used to be a roofer and shit. Like, are we going to work or is it going to rain? Like, I've been watching, like, ready to wait for, for this thing to happen. So the initial launch was supposed to be Thursday. Was it Thursday or was it Wednesday? It was Thursday, Wednesday, was it? Wednesday, I thought. Was it Wednesday? Uh, either way, um, him, Jaime and I here, we we were watching it like a hawk on YouTube, just um, checking it out. We were bummed out that they didn't launch, but we got a lot of cool information. The suits, the they new nice. space suits. So that's what I'm kind of talking about, like those new technology they're using to go out there. It's like it was so sleek, modern, wasn't all bulky. So and one of my movement, gamer like the buddies, movement they could do like the movement. Yeah. So one of my gamer buddies and I, we were talking about the suits. And I don't know, you've heard of the game Mass Effect? Yes, yep. Okay, do you remember the suits that they wore when they were on the NORAD ship? Yeah, yep. The space suits kind of look like the N7 suits from Mass Effect. I, I was, can see what you're saying. I can see what you're saying. That's it was a good totally cool. I was really geeked about the whole thing. Um, they look less bulky. It looks like they could they kind of maneuver a lot more. And then did you see I all, know, them, uh, all them pivot points it looks like it has is really amazing. Like the pivot yeah. points looked really cool. The EVA suit, or, or I think it's also supposed to be able for them to walk around on the planet suit, too. It's supposed to be like both, like an EVA suit, and they're supposed to be able to walk around <laughs> on the moon or Mars. And it looks so futuristic. How about them guys that were, like, strapping them in, dude? They were dressed in, like, those weird S&M suits, and they all had, like, numbers. <laughs> they had, like, numbers to run the train. Like, I'm 12, bitch. I'm 7. I'm yep. going 7. I wonder who's going to strap them in today yeah, like because weird leather s&m helmets and shit like bondage helmets and shit like they were the all in black too that was kind of it was kind of kinky it was weird it like, was really weird do you think elon musk had a hand in picking all that out yeah you know he did yeah he's like um i think i'm going to have them all dress in leather s&m suits i think they will dress like 
the energy waves that I perceive them to be like instead of the things that you think you see. That's true. I like it's your... weird how he talks, man. Like <laughs> you ever see sometimes when he talks to people, he has to like do this weird twitch because he has to like reset his vocabulary to talk to you like a monkey. Well, yeah, because he him talking to you, he has to dumb himself down a million times over because we're we're, we're nowhere near his level. It's like um, it would be like an infant versus Tyson. So yeah, he's that's dating... the mental equivalent. I can th- I can only think of. Would you not agree? How about the DeLorean doors on the fucking Teslas? Yeah, those models. Those are nice. Oh my! Is that the Model X? What was that? You know, I'm not big up on my uh, Tesla models, but they were pretty dope looking to me. And then some goon so out there. So it was there... like standard driver doors, but the passenger doors went out like me. Yeah, the back seat. Yeah, but some goon out there tried to compare the Apollo mission, gentlemen to these guys so in the original apollo launch you had all three of them next to their corvettes <laughs> yeah uh, i think they were 1968 or 69 probably they were brand new corvettes and uh then you had the new ones next to the teslas and they were trying to probably trying to say they're kind of pussies compared to the original apollo guys which i mean they are uh-huh. Because those original Apollo guys, those guys were really lis- risking life and limb. They did not know if it was going to even work. They're like, eh, we mil- built this tin can. It's got a rocket on the back, and we're going to shoot you into outer space. What do you guys think? They're like, yeah, let's do it. Well, you know what happened during this failed mission? The Well, the postponed mission, the conspiracists got a hold of it. And you know what that means. Bum, bum, bum. Rumors. So what they said was, there was an article, it was really funny. It said, the space launch didn't happen because it was fake. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, when I saw. And then, uh, what was the other one? Uh, there was another one. Uh, the space launch didn't happen. They, uh, Pelosi had her hand in this whole thing to make Trump look bad. Oh, crap. Or how about the space <laughs> launch didn't happen because they had to reset the Matrix? <laughs> yeah. The how reason about- it didn't happen is because I needed to go on Twitter. Yes. Donald how, Trump trying to shut down social media. How about the thing that we saw when we were watching the YouTube? We saw, we possibly saw a conspiracy of our own. Oh, yeah. I think we saw a rocket-powered bird because I've never seen something fly across the screen that fast. With a smoke trail on its ass. With a smoke trail, and it looked like it had flapping wings. And I thought birds can't fart. Right. I didn't think they could either. I thought they peed and pooped from the same hole, so I'm guessing you're not going to get any gas. You're just going to get water vapor. <laughs> It's going to be like a squirt gun. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, hopefully uh, good luck to those guys. You guys, this will have already happened by the time you view this, YouTube. But uh, I wish them all the best. I want to see success in this mission. I'm really excited. I'm a big-time space geek. I know all about all this stuff. I love it. and I'm, I know you're just as excited. All they need cons- to do it. All conspiracies aside, I want this to happen so bad. It's going to be so this cool. Stuff- I've been watching uh, this new show on Netflix called Space Force. Oh, yeah, you were shit. telling me about that. Yeah, go so ahead. So basically, like, I just wanted to be like Steve Carell in this show. He's Steve Carell's in it. I just wanted to be like, we're going to launch anyways. Like, <laughs> like, people would come in and cancel his launches when he was supposed to go up in space. And then as soon as they left the building, like, the president ordered person, like, left. Like, sec- Secretary of Defense leaves. He's like, the launch is back on. Like, <laughs> you didn't give a fuck. And the movie was so funny, man. It's great. So this decorated four-star general, I mean, you couldn't even fit any more awards on his fucking jacket and he's like at the top of the game and he gets called into a meeting and they decide they're they're talking about donald trump's space force you better not bring a magnet around that guy or else he's gonna get stuck and believe me these these will will be be spoiler spoiler free free. i'll just give you like the premise and stuff like that i'm not gonna give you like the whole yeah i don't want you to spoil because i'm gonna watch uh, it today so he gets in you know he gets involved in the space force which a lot of people think is a big joke, so that you know, so it's a comedy, and it's a whole series, and uh, it's a season, it's a whole season, and I'm like, uh, like three episodes in, and it's really funny, man. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna spoil nothing. I recommend you guys check it out. So, what is the space force? Uh, what what is it supposed to be? What's the purpose? The premise behind it? It's basically a defense team for outer space, like whatever. Whatever threats may be out there in space. So, like an upgrade to our Star Wars program. Yeah, it's funny, man. Um, I was entertained so far. Like I said, I'm three episodes in, and it's real good. The cast is amazing. I can't even name everybody, but you it's said got a good all-star cast in you there. You said Steve Carell 
and John, John Malkovich. Yeah, John, and then you said uh, Lisa Kudrow. Lisa Kudrow. Uh, man, there's so many more. Like I said, I'm so bad. I'm at things. excited to watch this. This is going to be great. It's funny, man. I really enjoyed it. You know, if you don't, my bad, but I really dug it. How many episodes have you watched now? Three. Wow. So you just sat down and watched three back to yeah, back. Yeah, and it plays like, and it plays. Netflix is so cool with this part. Shout out to Netflix right now because I got to give you a shout out. Um, we love you Netflix. for free. I'm giving you this one for free. Yeah. No? But we, who doesn't love Netflix? Come oh, on, man. They did it like it plays like a long movie, so that's why it oh. was so easy. Like the way, like as soon as the one segment ended, they would end it right at that last line he left off on, and you were just like, you didn't miss nothing. Oh, that's like, amazing. It was cool, man. The way they did it, it was like you were watching a long movie. That's fantastic. I'm excited now. I yeah. really want to. I'm gonna probably binge watch this today. Uh, after I get done here, I'm taking the wife to a party. I am not going to attend this party, party because there's going to be a lot of her friends, and that sounds boring as fuck. So <laughs> I'm going to drop her off, maybe eat some of the food at this party. Are you like the designated driver? I am. She said she wanted to get bombed. so I'm. That's gonna, cool, you. That's cool, man. Yeah, so I'm going to drop her off. I'm going to go eat some food. I'm going to go home. You got to do that sometimes. You got to let the ladies, you know, let loose. and. Oh, absolutely. Get, the, you get, know. A little, get a little... Me time. Yeah, she, you know, she, she needs uh, that time with other females. It's good for women. You know what I mean. My when lady they... went out last night. Uh, her and her girls. They did like a social distancing little bonfire type thing last night, and uh, they went and out had drinks and all that stuff. Looked like a good time, man. You know, you gotta let loose. Gotta let loose. Kind of like me and you. Our little getaway time. We come here. We meant to vent. That's right. We vented out. Yeah. Because you know when all she does is spend time with me. All I ever want to talk about is politics, nerd shit, <laughs> um, guns. You know, computers, video games, I mean, guitar, music. She gets bored with that stuff because her and I do not share the same taste in music. A little bit, but not quite as, you know what I mean? She likes some metal and rock, but she's not balls deep into it like I am. Uh huh. And, you know, she really doesn't get into the blues. So I'm just saying, like, her having that girl time is good for her because she's like, oh, my God, I can get away from my husband. I don't need to talk about all this other bullshit. It's kind of good for everybody. You got to have the you time. You got to make a little time for yourself, a little time for, and like a lot of time for the family. But always kind of, it's good healthy. It's good it's good mental health medicine. Beautiful. Yes, exactly. So this is episode 16. Episode 16. And with this episode, I would slap like to, uh, we, do, we do have a title for this episode. It's called Way Back When. And we're going to slap you in the face with it like a catfish that's been noodled. Yeah, whatever that yeah. means. No. We're going we're gonna to bring this back. We're going to take it back, like back to the things that I remember when we was kids, like stuff that probably ain't around anymore, or if it is, I'm sure shit ain't, kids ain't using it. Because everybody's with their phones and stuff. Mr. Peabody so set this... the Wayback Machine to 1990-something or another. Yeah, like late 80s, 90s, you know what sure. I'm saying? Sure. This... So I remember like old school toys and shit. I don't even know if they're still around, but you remember the pogo ball? Absolutely. <laughs> Nobody used the pogo ball correctly. Everybody had fucking crazy ass strong like thigh muscles, inner thigh muscles. Because you had to like squeeze that ball to hop around to keep the ball on yeah. your feet. Wait, wasn't that the hippity hop? No, it's called a pogo ball. Okay. It looked like Saturn. Yeah, that's the you stood on top of it. Yep. It, yes, okay. It's called a pogo ball. It's not the one you sit on with the little rope. Nope. That's the hippity hop, right? That's, I don't know, that's some kind of bouncy ball thing. Okay. But yeah, the pogo ball was the shit, man. I loved that thing. It looked like a Saturn, had like a little plastic deck, rubber on both sides, and you just squeeze that ball with your feet and just boing, da boing, da boing. For sure, man. That was like um, Toys R Us when they were open back in the day. They used to be really cool, like real lenient. Uh, you used to be able to go in there and play with toys, ride bikes, and try stuff in the aisles. What was your worst wipeout on that thing? I don't know, man. On the pogo ball? Yeah, on the pogo sure, ball. Uh, I don't know. I've been, I fell forward a lot of times, scratched my knees up in my hands and stubbed some fingers, you know, trying to break my fall. Yep. Getting messed up. I'm sure a lot of people had some sprained ankles on that thing because people used to try to do tricks. Like, it turned into this thing where people were doing, like, skateboard tricks and shit. I know. It was crazy. Like, jumping and twisting and, like, you would see people get jacked up. And that yeah. thing would, if it caught a crazy bounce, that ring around it was a hard plastic. It'd take people's teeth out. It'll bust fuck you up, you man. Up. It'll jack you up. Bust your shin bones. Oh, man. Dude, I was in the store. We were in, um, it, it was probably Toys R Us. Yeah. And I'm hippity hopping down, or I'm, I'm pogo balling down the aisle, and there was a small wet spot because a dude had mopped or something. And I hit it on the forward bounce. So when I hit it, the ball slipped straight out, and I landed right on my back. Smacked my head against the floor and everything. 
And do you think I told my mother? Hell no. That's funny. I didn't say nothing to my mother. I was limping. I was like, well, I got a bit of a headache. She's like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right. Yeah, so the pogo ball was crazy. Um, pogo ball was crazy. What, what about was that? The, uh, remember the skip ball thing? I was excuse, I was just about to get, say that. What about the skip it? You had to like put that thing on your ankle, and, and you it had, had to like counter. kick your leg around and run around like you was like had something wrong with your ankles or your hip or something like that. Yeah, I don't know what my highest number was on that thing, but I remember having to skip it like on my leg all day long. <laughs> You'd just be skipping it, and it was like one size on your foot, man. So if you got if it didn't fit you, you were jack, you were in trouble. If you used it too long, it would wear your ankle out. Like it's because. Most of the time, you used that in the summertime, so you had shorts on with no shoes, because that's how we rolled back in the 90s yeah, and the 80s. Yeah. It was no shoes, shorts on, no shirt, running around town like little kids. Yeah. And I remember wearing the skin out on my ankle, just <laughs> skipping away. So, it, so if we had to wear a tether, we would be used to it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It wouldn't affect the foot. Yeah, if you had that... What, what, that is, oh yeah, it is just a tether. I was thinking they got that GPS, but that's still a tether too. It's or what about tether. that? Uh, what was that one toy they had? Uh, um, I don't know if you remember these. They were like called like monster balls. See, I don't remember the monsters ball. So they would have not the movie, the toys like monster <laughs> balls. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking. So about. they would use all the sports like basketball, football, baseball, soccer. Even I think they even made a hockey puck and shit. So they were like they were basic sport balls. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But they made these. Uh, they made them out of this fucking hard ass plastic, and they'd make these cool ass, scary ass fucking monster faces on them. And then the commercial made them look all awesome, like kids are playing catch baseball with them and football with them, and kids gonna catch it. You get scared, like oh, because it's a fucking monster ball. Wow. And um, but what they didn't show you was when you bought it, it was a fucking hard ass piece of fucking plastic, man. You go play football and you fucking broke your fucking fingernails back. You're bleeding, going home. Oh shit. Things were hard to tell. You ain't gonna I, and you ain't gonna do that. They ain't bouncing. They got a basketball. Thing didn't bounce. I never played with one of those. That wasn't you know. Maybe I was too busy playing with my tachigami. Yeah, it didn't even bounce, dude. <laughs> like you got the basketball, it's like clap. And then the soccer ball, you ain't doing that. You're gonna blow your fucking foot out. Wow. Yeah, I never got an opportunity to play with one of those. That's interesting. Some of them toys were dangerous when we were younger. Hell man. yeah, they were. Dude, I had the Mega Bat. Do you remember the big red Mega Bat? Yeah, when we were uh, young, we uh, I think they were called the Boom Bat. That was it, the Boom Bat. Anything you hit was like, boom. That thing was awesome. That was the best wiffle ball bat of all time. Cause you, you know could... what we did uh, in my neighborhood? We my One of our friends had a fucking uh, privacy fence in their yard, and they had a fucking apple tree in their backyard. Okay. And so we would smash apples and just watch them disappear into the neighborhood. We don't even know where they would go. We'd oh, fight, boom, dude! And boom, just send them out, man, like crazy, like Comerica Park distances and shit, just with a fucking boom bat. Dude, no, we would go up to the local local store, and they had uh, a nickel machine where you could get super balls out of it, and we'd save up all our money, and we'd get a bunch of super balls, and we'd stand in my grandma's backyard, nice. and we'd hit super balls with it. Nice. But yeah, so. Just mashing Super Balls with the Boom Bat. So the Boom Bat, is that a 90s or an 80s toy? I'm not sure, but I'm sure it probably still exists. Yeah, I don't know. Because even the original yellow wolf bat that everybody loves. Oh, the thin, the skinny one? Yeah, I got that, and that's the, still available at places. The big, long banana phallus? Mm -hmm. That's like the original old school for home run yeah. derby. Yep, yep. That th You know, for some reason, you couldn't hit the ball as far, even if you got a good connect with it. No, with the yellow one, you did. The yellow one was awesome. Like I, that's why everybody buys it because it sent the and then and then you need the uh, then you need the original wiffle ball too, the original ball that came with it. Because man, that was great for home run derby. Yeah, because the regular wiffle ball has got those slots in it, and the ball doesn't go as far. But the one you're talking about, it's solid, isn't it? No, it's got the holes in it too, and it's just oh. the, and uh, then you would if you were pitching, you could throw crazy curveballs with it when you did home run derby. It was awesome. Interesting. Uh, Tachigami. Did you ever have a Tachigami? There's a good 90s toy. No, I didn't. I didn't have that. It must have been a suburbs, a suburbanite thing. I what about know. when, uh, the, like, Tyco had, like, all the fucking remote control cars and shit? They had, like, different kinds. Do you remember any of those? They had, like, one called the Animal. It was like, oh, yeah. It was, like, regular wheels, and then you hit the fucking button, and, and it had claws. claws would come out. Yeah, the claws would climb come rocks. Out. That motherfucker didn't climb shit no, with those it, things. You would flip it over. Sucked. It'd flip it over, you hit the gas, and, like, and just flip the fucking car I'm going to tell you right now, I, I was into building RC cars at that time because I, you know, back in the day when we were kids, you could actually earn a living 
as a preteen. You could go to work and make enough money to buy your own toys. You 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 earn pretty good. You could make some pretty good money. I made enough money over a summer. I bought myself an RC car kit, a expensive kit. I think I paid four or five hundred dollars for this whole kit. Nice. And I put it all together. And I remember when I put it all together, I was playing with it out in the parking lot by my house. And my buddy who lived next door, he's like, hey, dude, I just got this new RC car. And it was by that brand name. And it was he's like, I'm pretty sure it's faster than your than yours. I'm right. like, OK, well, let's see. I'm going to give you a 10 second head start right off rip. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah, that's how sure I am that I'm going to beat you. Because my car did 40 miles an hour. Remember those one remote control cars too where the body would twist? Would oh, like those were the shit. do all that weird shit. In the commercial, you were supposed to be able to do jumps and stuff and it would twist in the air. Yeah, it was weird stuff like that. It, or if the car flipped over, it would flip itself back. Yeah, it never did any of that stuff. Then they had the remote control that had two sides. Like it flipped over, it was another remote control car. It was yeah. like a different color hood. And it was like, you just keep driving. How about all the Tiger electronic handheld games? Oh, man. Oh, I man. had so many of those. I went through my mother's um, uh, cedar chest. It was some of my <laughs> old toys a few years back. And I found about eight of them. Oh, man. I had Tailspin, The Little Mermaid. Um, I had uh, Sonic the Hedgehog one. Oh, that's crazy. I had a Ninja Turtle one. I, I had a Ninja Turtle one in there, and there was a few others I can't remember the names of, and I was just like, wow, I wonder if these are any good. But guess what? They weren't any good. you know why? My dumbass had left the batteries in them. You, oh. would, uh, you would turn these games on, and there was like a little digital, pre-made digital screen. Yep. This was some old school shit, kids. And then like the little black thing would come out like a heli- like a calculator ink. And it would, like, move your little guys around, and you would, like, go through the levels on these it was, electronic handheld games. It was the poor man's Game Boy because, yeah, you know. Yeah, pre-Game Boy. Yeah, because you, you, you couldn't, you know, and it you could only play one game. It just only came with one game, and they weren't very expensive. It was like the pyramid of Game Boys. Yeah, basically. Like they the were pyramid. fun. They were a lot of fun, though. There was a lot of cool ones out there, and, it's you know, I spent a lot of my childhood playing those games. Or you know, remember what I was telling you about before? I used to love those tabletop games. So I used to love going to Pizza Hut because, like, Pizza Hut used to be, like, the fucking pizza place to go. Hell yeah. And they used to have these tabletop video games where, like, one side was, like, Donkey Kong and one was, like, Pac-Man. Or, or it would be, like, guys Space could, Invaders. Yeah, and, like, you could sit there on this glass table and have your drink there and shit like that and be playing these games. And uh, Pizza Hut, like I said, before all these chains came, Pizza Hut used to be the spot. You know that. Oh, yeah. Pizza Hut was the place to go. Like you and I were talking about, you you said you did the same thing I did. Me and my mother, we would go there and order the pizza while we were there. Yeah, we wouldn't, you didn't want to deliver it. Yeah, you wanted to sit you, there and play you, video games and shit. And you didn't call ahead because you wanted to hang out there. Yeah. So you'd go there and order your pizza and you'd hang out and you'd play the little tabletop games. My mother's thing was Galaga. I'd play our, uh, I would play um, Pac-Man or uh, Centipede. They had all different ones. And every week it felt like they were changing tabletop games. Yeah, it was awesome. It was badass. And they weren't like your regular stand-up arcade games. They laid flat so you could set your drink on it and you'd sit there at it in a little stool. Just perfect for a kid. And they used to have sweet-ass giveaways. Used to give away the coolest shit. I don't even know if they still do that now. You'd go there and get a fucking free basketball. You get a fucking like sunglasses. These sunglasses were so popular in the nineties that everybody would have these glasses. Like you didn't fucking you weren't the shit if you didn't have these glasses. They were like a fluores different fluorescent colors. You'd have like the pink and the greens and all that shit and the blues. Oh yeah. And everybody was getting them from Pizza Hut, man. They have like all kinds of crazy stuff, man. Pizza Hut used to be the bomb. Used to be like the spot to be. Dude, speaking of sunglasses. How about the sunglasses we used to have that didn't even have any lenses in them? Yeah. It was just like the louvers. Yeah, them little slits, like, oh like my sideways God. blinds. <laughs> they were those naked blinds and shit. I Everybody think, would wear those, too. I think I've seen Kanye West or somebody like that rock Yeah, tried to bring time. him back. He tried to bring him back. Tried yeah. To bring him back. You ain't bringing that shit back. That shit was so faded. He failed. Oh, man. He failed. He failed because he what, was the only one wearing them. What was the point of that? Because you weren't blocking the sun with that. I don't know. You probably blocked the sun on, like, at like seven o'clock, <laughs> like when the sun was in, and he would have to turn a certain way. So like after the, after its peak, That's maybe around funny. seven seven thirty p.m. wherever you were staying, I did probably work then. I never had any of those, but I had the giant sunglasses. You know the ones I'm talking about. Yep, yep. Those were cool. The gag sunglasses. I always liked that stuff. <laughs> How about what we were just talking about earlier? You saw my new uh, my new sapatos. Uh, how the water shoes, how popular water shoes were back in the 90s. Yeah. 
Like, it feels like every kid was roaming the streets in a pair of water shoes. And I'm telling you, I know this happened a lot when you were a kid. Did you play in the street when the street flooded after a big-ass storm? Oh, yeah, we'd all do that. Hell, yeah. Would you guys know, if you knew a storm was coming, would you guys intentionally block the drains? And, oh, my gosh, that just brought me back to that. Remember them fucking scooters? Like, the, the scooters with the fucking air tires on them? Like, oh, like, yeah. We had scooters with air tires. Those were so, those were so cool. And handbrakes, because those things, like, if you caught a good hill, man, that thing was going. Yeah, yeah, You'd yeah. you go through the dirt, all that. They were like dirt, little dirt bike tires. But fucking for they, a fucking scooter. They were better than the razors because you could Way really better. You could really get going, and it was nice smooth ride because it was an air tire. Air tire. Yeah, and you could hit bumps and stuff, and you'd be good. You wouldn't fling you off or nothing. So that's what we would do with those. Like when the rain would come and the streets would flood, we'd fucking ride our scooter in there barefoot, like woo, fucking jump Hell right in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. But we would intentionally try to like block the drains and stuff. We would get the um, the thing. What's the thing? The floor mat out of your mother's car. Okay. Yeah, I got I used to oh, get, put it over the drain. Dude, I got my ass whooped so many times as a kid for doing this, putting the floor mat over the drain just to block the streets, you know, so that the street would fill up with water just so that I could ride my bike through. And you know, the parents would be sitting on their porch going, "Do you know, guys, that's sewer water." Who gives a shit? We're kids. We didn't care about all Not that. Not a single bit. We drive through that shit water all day. Okay, here's one for you. The Furby. How 90s is that piece of crap? People, that was weird shit. That's what that was. So, I had a, me and my mother, we both had a Furby. She thought it would be an awesome gift. It was pretty cool for a little while. So, the premise was, is you got this alien creature <laughs> that, that blinked. That blinked, and you could feed it, and it had a little light sensor in its forehead, so it could tell when it was day or night. It or would when cry. The, it would cry. It would do all these things. And if you spent enough time with it and talked to it enough, it would learn English eventually or learn your language. That shit never happened. I never taught that thing to talk, and I never understood it either. It'd be like, ooh la nina I'd be like, what do you want? I'd be like, ah la ah la And then it would open its mouth, so I'd push it. I had a little button on its tongue uh -huh. so you could pretend you were feeding it. And then it would, like kind of like make all these noises i didn't know what the hell that thing wanted that is funny dude it was weird it was really weird uh do you remember the life-size gremlin i used to have did you ever get a chance to see that i don't think so i used to have a life-size gremlin statue that i got from a buddy of mine and i ended up giving it away because i had the thing for a long time i'd gotten my use out of it basically nice. i was tired of it i probably had it for about 10 years and um but, yeah, it was pretty cool, and it was full size. It used to scare the shit out of people. They'd come into my house. They'd call me, like, hey, Bill, we're at your house. I'm like, dude, go in. The door's open. And I had it sitting on the entertainment center back before, you know, we had flat screen TVs. Nice. You know, you had a regular TV. Yeah. It had the entertainment center. I had it on top. The room would be all dark. They'd be like, oh, what the fuck is that? I'd be like, oh, that's just a gremlin. Don't mind it. Don't feed it. <laughs> so let me circle back real quick. So I watched the movie Uncut Gems, and I just want to make a quick thing. Just, just a I did not enjoy it. I was bored out of my mind. I found Adam Sandler's character to be extremely annoying, and that's all I got to say about that. It wasn't. It just did. I. It didn't live up to the hype for me. Okay. Sorry. I for, I for one liked it, but no big yeah, deal. I know you liked it, and you know you you had recommended it to me, and I checked it out, and I just I don't know, just didn't. Uh, I was an hour into it, and me and my it wife... It didn't were... feather your dusters? <laughs> it did not feather my dusters. It didn't blow my skirt up, man. It didn't shiver your timbers? You know, it You know, it didn't light my wick. <laughs> it didn't john your wick? Whoa, it didn't butter my bread. Did it bill your Ted? Well, none of those. None of those. Did it Andy your Griffith? No, nah, it didn't even Andy my Griffith. Maybe it different your strokes. <laughs> You got another one? Did it fax your life? No. <laughs> it didn't even save my bell. Damn. How the nerve of them. So an hour in, I tell the uh, tell the wife, I say, uh, how much left in this movie? And she hits the <laughs> button. You know, she's like, there's another hour. I'm like, fuck me. And hey, I did redeem myself with that, that little comedy clip I sent you. Oh, now. dude, those were great. I ended up watching all of those. I laughed out loud so hard a couple times that I actually scared the other members of my household. Nice. And by other members, I mean my wife and my two dogs. 
so I was watching this uh, weird clip. I got a couple little things I was going to bring up real quick. Okay, okay. Um, I was watching this segment. Uh, there was like an interview with uh, Billy Corgan. I think that's his name from Smashing Pumpkins. Yep, Billy Corgan. He's yeah. the lead. Yeah, so he was uh, interviewed, and he was talking about he was real good friends with Dennis Rodman. Ooh, okay. You know, oh, Dennis Rodman is friends with a lot of interesting people. So he was saying Dennis Rodman was just a really cool guy. He says there's never – he doesn't have a bad bone in his body. He plays aggressive basketball. He was a fan because he's from Chicago, so – he was, you know, a fan of the Bulls, that whole era of the Bulls there, that dynasty. Right, right. And so he was just like uh, saying how he was just good friends. They would always hang out. And um, I don't think Rodman's a bad guy. He just seems like a big-time partier, you know what so, I mean? Yeah, so he says after one big game of the playoffs, they're in the finals against Utah, and they just grab a plane, and they get. he knows, I know, I know a billionaire, so let's go out to Vegas. So He after grabbed the game, a plane, so what are they playing they with fly, toys? So they take in there a private airplane, they go to Vegas, okay, they're gambling gotcha. out there, drinking. And then they go back because he's got a basketball game. He's playing sure. in the NBA Finals to win the sixth championship with the Bulls. You know, Ooh. like some crazy, like the biggest like game of of his career. Right. And he's out there going to Vegas. You know, going to party. Well, that was you know that so was him. That was Dennis. He says Rodman. that uh, he goes and parties with them. Blah blah, blah and then all that stuff's done. This is a whole different story. He says he meets him again at another time, and he sees him at a bar. And he's like, "Oh man, it was good to see you. Good, you know, good talking with you. This and that." He was like, "I'll be right back," and then he just left. And the guy was like, uh, it was like 10 minutes goes by. He's like, where'd Dennis Rodman go? And so he looks for Dennis Rodman, and he's like, uh, the guy said he took off, man. He left the bar. And he's like, whoa, that was weird. And then he looks on the news so the next wait, day. So wait, Rodman just bails on him? Yeah, so the next day he looks on the news, and Dennis Rodman's in North Korea with, with uh, Kim, Kim Jong-un. Wow. And he was like, that was really random. Like, it was just weird because that he's a good friend with him. He didn't say anything about it, didn't bring nothing up about it. Just the uh, sudden he's over there. You, you know, I have a feeling this is how it played out. So you you, you pretend to be uh, Billy Corgan and I'll be Dennis Rodman. So we're hanging okay. out at the bar. Like, I used to be a little boy. So, yeah, man, basketball. And this and is the like the Bulls. <laughs> So yeah, man, basketball and this and that and six championship and we're the Bulls and we're awesome. Hold on, man, I gotta take this phone call. I'll be right back. <laughs> all then, right, man, I'll be sitting right here. I'll see you when you get back. Yeah, all right, hold on. And then I'm still Dennis Rodman. And I'm gonna walk away. And I'm gonna pick up my phone and be like, "Yes, hello." <laughs> now you pretend to be King Jong Un. Dennis Rodman, it yeah. is me, King Jong Un. Oh, what's up, I man? I love the Bulls. I love Jordan. I love basketball. Yeah, I love the Bulls. For sure. Thanks, Come see dude. me. Come party with me. Yeah, you bet, man. I'm going to hop on a plane and come to you right now. You come with me. Okay. You got it. Bye. Click. And that's it. That's how that transaction went. And then here comes the plane. And then you say nothing to Billy Corgan. You just dip out on him. Yep. I love it. <laughs> that sounds like a Rodman thing to do. Maybe he was just like, uh, he didn't think about it. He got totally squirreled by the fact that King Jong-un was like, Hey, come see me. He's probably like, damn, I got to go take this plane. Bye. Back in the day, you know, back in the day before the 90s. Back, back when you could actually touch a basketball player and defend him. That's right. Now these little babies, you can't touch their shirt. You can't breeze by them too close or they're going to get a free throw. You know, You're a bunch of pansies. bunch of pansy asses. You know, you could give a guy an elbow in the ribs and it didn't mean diddly squat. You had to earn your layups in our league, Sonny. That's right. You might get punched in the old pecker if you try to go in for a slam dunk. Players that averaged 35 points in this league today would average four points in that game back then. You're going to take a couple kidney hits. That's just the way it was. You're going to get a shot to the liver. Yeah. And then you know what? After the game's done, we're going to drink a beer. Ain't nothing like a shot to the liver when you try to dunk on me, boy. It's not going to happen. It makes the beers go down better when You're you gonna get a You're going to earn couple. your buckets. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Back in my day, basketball wasn't even basketball. We didn't use baskets or balls. We used to run with scissors, and we played with cinder blocks. And then I wore wooden shoes. Talk about moving picks. That's right. You got to move them picks with your scissors and your cinder blocks. <sighs> Listen, back in my day, if you couldn't get hit by a 47 Dodge and get up and play for two and a half rounds, you weren't shit. You, put, you pansy ass. You pansy ass. You got, a, you got an ass full of lead, you fucking pussy. You're a daisy. <laughs> You're a yellow daisy, that's what you are I tell you, back in my day, a guy like Dennis Rodman He'd play about three rounds with us And he'd be pushing up the daisies That was after partying for four days straight On you an alcohol binge in Vegas That's 
So I was watching uh, this show called Botched. My wife had it on Botched? TV. Botched is that uh is that like a surgery show? Yeah, so it's like bad surgeries. You got you Ooh. like you know it's bad when the show is called Botched. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a botch. And first surgery. of all, like the guys, there's like two. It's about two surgeons. My man's like, and they both look like they got their own surgery done. And the one dude looks like the fucking uh, little boy from the Munsters, grown up. Oh, that's scary. He's like, looks like a wolf boy or something. Like, you don't, you don't want something happens with his neck too, man. Like something weird Ugh. happens. Like he'll be sitting there regular talking with everybody. Then when he turns to the side, like it just goes away. His neck just like, mm. his neck just disappears when you he turns to you. Listen, you don't want somebody from a Bram Stoker's novel trying to cut you up and do some surgeries on you. Yeah, and then like the people that go on this show, they look like they just had way too much surgery. They remember them, they remind me of that guy from the Adam Sandler movie when the face don't move, and he's yeah, like. Yeah. Uh, He's like, yeah. I'm not trying to hit home runs. I'm just trying to hit singles. And he tries to laugh, and he's like, because mm. <laughs> her mouths don't move. That's what. It, that's how much shit they get. Like this one lady showed up, man. Shit was all blown out. These guys were like, I ain't gonna touch your face. It's just too messed up. I'll see you next Wednesday. That's amazing. <laughs> so did they have that lady on, or are they going to have that lady on, who had the surgery to make herself look like Angelina Jolie? Do you know the female that I'm talking about? Yeah, they had this one lady try Whoa. to do Angelina Jolie. She came out looking like the lady from Saul, like the Saul she face. She looks scary. She looks worse than an undead zombie. It looks like a carnival mask. You know them big masks? They put the six-foot mask that they make out of paper mache. That's what her face looked like she, in Carnival. Nevada. That is a scary looking person. I mean, I'm telling you, I there's and there's no going back. That shit should be in Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> Man. Cirque du Solo. Keep that shit some by itself. That was that was terrifying when I saw that. Because you don't even see an Angelina Jolie resemblance. No. You look at that and you're like, are you sure you weren't going for Crypt Keeper? Yeah, not or, Angelina Jolie. Or maybe maybe a cast member from The Outer Limits. I don't know what you were going for, but that was not Angelina Jolie. Back to some of that 90s stuff. Remember the fucking, like, when everybody used to wear some of that, like, the fluorescent shit? Like, that was in, this, in the, back in the day, like, the fluorescent stuff came in. Like, this tennis player came out, and he was real popular because Nike signed him. Hell yeah. And he dated Brooke Shield. It was Andre Agassi. I still love fluorescent stuff and he reminds of me, the that's 90s. Who I think, that's who I think Theo Vaughn looks like, is like a broke-down Andre Agassi. Oh, that's kind of funny. Because they got the same hair, but I'll, and now he's wearing the fucking headband now, which yeah, is yeah. Really funny and irrelevant. Like, this, like, so ironic that they're doing the same headband now. But uh, if you see this, it's just funny. That's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> that- but, uh... Yeah, so he everything was everybody was wearing fluorescent shit for a while back in the nineties. It was like a little phase for like Nike and shit like that. And it seems like that stuff can kinda of came back. We also had these weird toys, I don't know if they have now, but they were like these rubber things and they were like this little big thing and they were like dinosaurs or monsters and you put them in water and then they would fucking grow big as fuck. Oh, it was like a little sponge. It was like a super compressed sponge. Well, some of them would be rubber, like this thing would be like this big rubber dinosaur, like or some sort of a monster yeah. thing and they're like then it would disintegrate or start to melt and shit, and it was like bad it would, chemical. It would suck up all the water, and then it would grow, and then it would kind of like, I don't know, it felt like some kind of sea creature because it felt real weird once it yeah. grew up. It was, it was. Oh, remember gross. that octopus? That that little you, octopus wait, that you would just throw on the wall, and it would like crawl down the wall. It was like this sticky oh, little octopus. Yeah, those were sweet. But wait, wait, he would like just fling it up there and we just walk down. Back to the sponge thing. Did you ever hit one of your buddies with one of those? Yes. Oh my god, does that hurt? Because it's heavy. It's got all that water in it, and it's not like a sponge. The water doesn't splash out of it, people. It's sucked in there. It's locked in. <laughs> you slap somebody with it, I mean, it's probably the equivalent of getting hit with a very large rubber sex toy. If you get like a fish, like you said earlier, yeah. if you're getting like a fish. Or, like you or a, hit fish. With a fish. Or, you know, maybe a dead kangaroo. I'm not sure. but The one that made your hat. Yes. Not this hat. Different hat. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely uh, not something, and it was not in the warnings. There was no warning that said, "Hey, don't slap your friend yeah. in the mouth with this." This isn't a weapon. Yeah, because don't I use did for that. pillow fights. I remember I grabbed that thing and I did. I just turned around and slapped my friend right in the mouth, and he fell to the ground. How about them old airplanes? Remember them big styrofoam airplanes? Oh hell yeah! You put them together. It was like three parts, maybe two parts. It, it was it was three parts, I think. If I'm oh, not mistaken. Oh dude, I know I got one for you. Hold this on. Is ultimate nineties toys. Okay, go ahead. You go to any party store, or gas station. They'd be in a little plastic cup. There were those little airplanes you could build. 
And they were like oh, in little sealed wrappers. Yeah, 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 and they were like made out of balsa wood. And, and, and the, some of them were foam. Some were foam. All of mine were out of balsa wood. And if you got the more expensive one, it came with a little propeller and a rubber band. Yeah, and some would have it. camouflage and cool like designs on them and stuff like that. That was the shit. Oh, those were the fun. You guys missed out on those. Yeah, those were so much fun. I must have bought one of those a week because I'd always wreck them. You would always break them, but they were cheap. Yeah. And you could get them all the time. They were like a dollar or something. But back to the big foam airplane planes the big uh the glider the one wing would always break on you yeah if you didn't know what you were doing you needed a big space I, needed... I got a bloody nose from one yeah because they're huge and then you could adjust the tail fins to pull the wind and drag and if you did it the wrong way it would just do a like a boomerang effect yeah it would do one big loop and just clock you in the face yep and that's what happened to me it was like one big loop and then bam right in my mouth dude. I... I, I would sometimes, I you could get it to where you could get it to fly in a nice circle, and then it'd be like a boomerang, and you could catch it. <laughs> but yeah, like he said, I had that happen. I threw it, and it flipped around, and it clipped me in the back of the head. And yeah, it was no joke. It was no joke. That fucker hit me in the ear. There was this toy before they made, like, remote control airplanes, all Uh-oh. right? You would go to Toys R Us, like, all these those stores would have them. Yeah. We even had, like, KB Toys, all them oh, toys. Oh, yeah, stores. I loved KB Toys. So it was, like, a big battery pack. Like, okay. Like, this thing looked, like, the size of your vape box. Like, it was this big, <laughs> like, this big, <laughs> like, almost a microphone size, you know, this big box, man. So what, bigger than this? Yeah, it was a little bigger than that. Okay. And you would hold it in your hand and held batteries in there, like big-ass D batteries. Oh, shit. And it had this fucking power cord, like maybe a 10-foot cord, and at the end of this cord was a fucking airplane. Oh, you know what I'm talking about? And I know it wasn't like free fun. So all you had to do as a kid is like, you had to fucking go in a damn circle. And you would fucking pull the trigger, you would, and you would have to go in a circle with this fucking airplane with a legit propeller that was easily going at, like, 2,000 RPMs. Wait, wasn't it designed for you to, like, hang it from the ceiling and so it would fly around in a circle? No, this one was handheld. This thing was so big, and you would, like, they got kids in the commercial even on TV, like, could spin it in a circle. and Or you could walk sideways, but it, w- it wouldn't let you walk sideways. This thing wanted to go turn every time. It would cut your face off if you didn't turn. <laughs> so you would, like, out of your fear for your life, you would just head it, like, Ooh, and you're, everybody was going in a circle getting sick and spinning around getting dizzy. Oh, wow. I didn't have that particular one. I had the one, you know what I'm talking about. I'll probably put a pickup so it, you guys could see what it I'm was talking about. It was on a string, and you'd hang it from the ceiling. I know which one you're talking and about. And you just turn it on, and it would fly in a circle. But it was just as dangerous because once you turned the damn thing on, it got going so fast, you had to grab a hold of it. And if you yeah. grab that propeller, it would eat your hand up. It would jack you up. Yeah, so uh, we hope you guys are enjoying this episode uh, because me and my man, One Take Will here, we're having a blast doing this. Uh, So we would appreciate a like and a subscription if you you guys are liking what you're watching. Yeah, we hope you appreciated this episode of Throwing Back to the 90s. Uh, Because, you know, that was our childhood, 80s, 90s. It was a beautiful time to be a child. It was a great time to be alive. Some people even say the 90s was one of the best uh, eras there because of, like, it kind of, like, um, opened up a doorway to the things that we're doing today. You know? I mean, we didn't even touch on the cartoons that we really grew up with. We just talked about toys. For sure. We could probably do a whole other episode on cartoons, the Canadian cartoons and the regular cartoons that we grew up with out of this world. We might have to do that. We might have to do an episode on cartoons. We probably will. Or TV shows. Yeah, like stuff that you can't do on TV now. Like yeah. Those shows that definitely can't be done. No, no, we're not going to do any spoilers on you know, but whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, it, we uh, we hope you guys are really enjoying what we're doing. We love doing this. Like and subscribe. We need those subscriptions to keep this ball rolling, people. And um, uh, my name is uh, – you can reach me on Instagram at the Heim one And you can reach me on Instagram at one take will. And this has been another episode of – Meant to Vent. We're out of here. <laughs>